Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to explain to you what is known as the Gordon Growth Model of Stock Valuation. Sometimes it is also known as the Constant Dividend Growth Model of Stock Valuation. But before we continue with this, I do want to tell you about something that is a little bit related, but you won't see it immediately, and that is this. If you buy a stock, say at time period zero for a price, let's suppose P0, and you hold on to that investment for one year, if somebody asks you what is the total return that you made from holding that stock for one year, you'll say, well, I got two things out of it. One, I got some sort of a dividend, and I'll call it D1, the dividend that I got at the end of one year and then I was able to sell the stock or the stock was worth a certain price, call it P1. So if somebody asks you what is the return, you'll say, well, the total return is A, I got dividend, right? That's D1. And then I also made a return in terms of the difference in the price of the stock. The price of the stock was P1 at the end of year one, it was P0, so the price difference is another way I made some extra money. All of that divided by the initial price. So if I were to use some numbers, let's suppose you bought the stock for, say, $50. The dividend, let's suppose you got, was of 10 And let's suppose that by the end of year one, the stock was worth, say, $60. Then the total return would be 10 which is the dividend that you got. And then the difference between the price, which is 60 minus 50, that's another 10. So basically you made $20 from holding the stock. And if you divide that by the initial price of 50, you say basically I made $20 of a $50 investment, which is basically a 40% return, right? And that's how we can think about it. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning that is because you can further break this down into D1, over P0, and then you can write the second component as P1 minus P0 over P0. Again, this is me just rewriting the same thing. This is known as the dividend yield, the dividend yield of the stock. This is how much return that you're making just through the dividend component of the stock. And this second component is known as the capital gains. In other words, how much return you made based on the difference in prices. Now I realize that some of you are thinking, well, what has all of this got to do with the Gordon growth model? Please bear with me. Keep this information in the back of your mind. You will see that there is a very, very important link between what I just told you and what the Gordon growth model implies. Now, just to quickly refresh your memory, the dividend discount model of stock valuation says that the price of the stock today, call it P0, this is what I'm referring to as the price, that is the discounted value of all the dividends that you can expect to get from the stock in the future. So if you have some required rate of return from a stock, call it R, if you're expecting dividend D1 at the end of year one, simply discount it back, D2 discounted two years back, D, D3 discounted three years back, and keep doing this forever because when you own a stock, you own ownership in an entity that is potentially going to last forever. Now what the Gordon Growth Model says is that what if we are looking at a firm where dividends have a specific pattern? Specifically, what if dividends are growing at a constant growth rate? So let's suppose that growth rate is G. Let's suppose, say, 2%. The Gordon Growth Model says that what if dividends each year are just growing at a constant rate of, say, 2%. So that if you are expecting D1 dividend at the end of year one, D2, all of this is D2. D2 is just going to be whatever dividend was last year into one plus this growth rate of 2%. And similarly, D3 would be equal to D2, which is last year dividend into one plus G. Well, guess what? Because D2 itself was equal to D1 into one plus G, you can write D2 as D1 into 1 plus G, 
And then all of that is going to be multiplied by 1 plus g to give you d3. Well, d1 into 1 plus g into 1 plus g is basically d1 into 1 plus g square. And so basically this then is the pattern. If dividends are expected to grow at some constant growth rate, then we can expect dividend each year to have this pattern where each subsequent year you're going to have d1 into 1 plus g square, then cube, then 4, so on and so forth. Now, some of you who've looked at discounted cash flow valuation exercises before, you may recognize this immediately. This looks like a growing perpetuity. If somebody asks you, what is the present value of all these cash flows? That simply is equal to the first year cash flow, which in this case is D1, divided by R, which is your discount rate, and G, which is your growth rate. And so P0 is the price that you're expecting of the stock today, which is simply D1 over R minus G. Now, it sometimes so happens that D1 itself is expected to be G percent higher than the dividend that you just got today at time period zero. So in other words, let's suppose that you just got a dividend, call it D0, this is today. Next year dividend is going to be D1. If there is constant growth happening, then D1 itself may be D0 into one plus G. So another way of writing this same formula would be to say P0 equals D0 into 1 plus G divided by R minus G. Don't get confused because you're still saying the same thing. All of this is basically D1. Now what I'm going to do is walk you through an example in which you can see how you can implement this equation. So suppose there is a company called the BMX company and it has just paid, okay, just paid a dividend of $3.20 per share. When it says just paid, this means that they're talking about D0. So if you're looking at some sort of like a timeline where here you are at time period zero, they're telling you that D0 is $3.20 per share. And the dividends are expected to grow at a constant rate of 4%. Okay, so the growth rate is given, which is 4%, which means that D1 is going to be 320 into 1.04, right? Just 4% higher. Uh, investors require a return of 10.5%. So they've given the value of R. They're asking a bunch of things. First, what is the price of the stock today? That is P0, price today. But then interestingly, they're also asking, what do you think will be the price of the stock in one year, in two years, in three years? This is very, very important. You'll see how calculating these prices is going to give you a better idea of what the Gordon growth model implies. So this is what I've done. I've basically incorporated all this information in this Excel sheet. So at time period zero, we're getting a dividend of 320. We know that next year it's going to be 320 times one plus this growth rate. And I'm going to lock the cell reference with a four button so that next year is going to be 3.33. I'm going to copy this and paste this through and through. This continues forever, right? So next year dividend is just 3.33 into 1 plus 4%, just 4% higher. Now, if somebody asks you what is going to be the price today, price today is simply going to be the dividend that you're expecting at the end of year one divided by R minus G. R is 10.50% minus the growth rate, which is 4%. Now, if the question is, what do you expect the price to be one year from now, which is the price expected here? I'm gonna calculate it here. Same idea, except P1 is going to be a function of the dividend that you're expecting in year two. So it's going to be equal to 3.46 divided by R minus G, where R is the required rate of return, 10.5%, and G is the growth rate, which is 4%. Notice that when one year goes by, you still have an infinite stream of cash flows. So this is very much still a growing perpetuity, and you can use this formula, except that the dividend that you have to consider is D2 for the price of P1. And the same thing is true for price of P2. The P2 is going to be D3 divided by 10.50% uh, minus the growth rate. 
and you get the idea p3 is going to be d4 divided by 10.5 percent minus 4 percent now i know the question did not ask this but what if i were to ask you what do you expect the growth in the prices to be over time actually you can answer that because you know that you're buying the stock today at 51.20 next year the price is expected to be 53.25 why because it's a function of future dividends and so the growth in prices is expected to be 53.25 minus 51.20 divided by 51.20 and let me format this right so this is going to be in percentages and like that huh four percent interesting this is not a coincidence this four percent exactly coincides with the growth rate of dividends in fact if you bought the stock at time period one and somebody asked you what is the growth rate in prices that you're expecting you would say well it's expected to be 55.38 and so the growth rate is going to be 55.38 minus 53.25 divided by 53.25 the same four percent main point the prices are expected to grow at a rate of four percent this is not a coincidence in the gordon growth model the growth rate in dividends is ex exactly equal to the rate at which you are expecting your prices to go up i know i'm calling it growth rate and prices in a way that you're what you're saying is that you're expected capital gains is four percent isn't it this is going back to what i talked about talked about how do you make a rate of return on your investment saying one way in which you're going to make a return on your investment is by buying the stock at a certain price and then selling it for a certain price so this four percent is the, the capital gains is that the only way in which you make your rate of return no the other way that you make your return is through dividends specifically you buy the stock at a price of 51.20 next year you're expecting dividends of 3.33 if somebody asks you what is the dividend yield that you're expecting on your stock you can answer that you say well i'm buying the stock for 51.20 next year i'm going to get 3.33 that as a fraction of the price that i'm paying today is 6.5 percent i'm gonna put this in fraction this is not a coincidence as well because then what you're really saying is that the total return that i'm going to make from holding the stock is simply four percent from the capital gains and the 6.5 percent which is the dividend yield 10.5 percent which is exactly equal to your required rate of return and this is what i was trying to get at that your total return is still equal to capital gains plus dividend yield but the gordon growth model implies that the capital gains is exactly equal to the growth rate in dividends so taking you back to this equation where we said that the total return that you make is dividend yield plus the capital gains which is p1 minus p0 over p0 what i'm saying to you is that the gordon growth model implies that the total return is d1 over p0 and that the capital gains part is exactly equal to g and if you don't believe me go take a look at the equation that you solved to determine price p0 that was p0 equal to d1 divided by r minus g isn't it well you can write r minus g so take r minus g on this side this will be equal to d1 over p0 and from here you can see that r which is your return is simply going to be equal to d1 over p0 plus g yeah that's exactly what i'm saying r equals d1 over p0 plus g pretty cool huh if you found this video useful click the like button and subscribe to the channel and feel free to ask any questions using the comment section happy learning